Yeah, and then, uh, what was it? Uh, she starts to talk to him about the kiss, and he was just like, yeah, like, I was about to die. It seemed like a good idea yeah. at the time, too. Like, just gets up and leaves. Like, she's overthinking it, and he's like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I was gonna die, like, lady, mm-hmm. like, what? You're way hotter than the dudes I was kissing in this Egyptian prison. <laughs> it's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes with Tony and Newt and Johanna. Talking about tapes. Hello, everyone. Oh, hey, Tony. Johanna and Newt. The, the dream team. Everyone says my favorite team is Johanna, Newt, and Tony, which I don't think has been done on the show. No, not yet. <laughs> no, this is the first one uh, with you. We did a mailbag, mm-hmm. and we did a... Ga- Castilla. Castilla. And you you interrupted the end of our Godzilla vs. Kong one. I did. One. That's right. But now we're all together. I just look for excuses to hang out with Johanna and not Tony. Oh, that's really Can we mean. just get rid of you and just have Crystal? The last time they tried to get rid of me on the show, yeah, but see that- it underperformed. No, because you spent the last few years going, Pokemon is for children. Then Pokemon why did you is- think the episode was going to do well? That was a Justin Silverman thing. I uh, thought his clout would carry us across the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been in that episode, I to guess be so. honest. Do you know a lot about Pokemon? I do. I really like oh. the Pokemon, uh, the second movie, 2000. We don't have time to talk about I, Pokemon. We have to yeah. talk about The Mummy. Can we also talk about how I added a new Newt movie to the uh, the wall there? I finally got my copy from Lauren LaPrey of Dark Military. Lauren uh, co-wrote and directed my Roadhouse movie. Yeah, yeah. so I play a uh, a news reporter in that movie. So if you want to check that out, it's on Amazon Prime. But you know what's better than that? Mummy Cop. Mummy Cop! No. Wow. But you're just mad you Damn. didn't get to be in Mummy Cop. I didn't want to be a Mummy Cop. But you were in Stump Grinder. You were in <laughs> one of the Stump Grinders. One of the three. <laughs> no one's found it yet. People, I people, know. People were looking for it. No one's found it. It's not that hard to find. Anyway, they, they were actually finding actual Stump Grinders, like the tool you yes. use. And they're like, what am I looking for? <laughs> anyway, the Mummy. The Mummy. From the 90s. So 1999. 1999. Yep. So this is a little late because the early 90s were all about remaking Universal monsters. Like yeah. Dracula and Frankenstein, which are usually on the mm-hmm. set, but you moved them out of the way. Thank you. For but that. this the movie, one time they would have been relevant yeah, to the conversation. Yeah, well, but mummy anyway. movies. But this movie was in development during that time. Yeah, uh, under yeah. Clive Barker and George Romero. Which, really, they both had super interesting takes. Yeah, on the mummy before they went to the guy who made the, the Jungle the, Book, the first live action <laughs> Disney Jungle yeah. Book. Yeah, which is a movie I like, but it doesn't really feel like Jungle Book. Then again, I never actually read the book jungle book so maybe mm-hmm. it's more accurate i'm not sure uh but yes the mummy like you're right it came out after bram stoker's dracula mary shelley frankenstein mm-hmm. uh mary riley which fucking Ma- nobody no one remembers. That's, a do- that's a dr jekyll and mr hyde movie with, with Julie roberts. Uh, roberts and she has underarm hair in it and then uh wolf with jack nicholson <laughs> which is basically a wolfman remake yeah so yeah for, the, for some reason there was this weird trend of remake memoirs of, of an invisible man with chevy chase was that in that time? Oh my Remember God. that? Yeah. <laughs> was that in that time? John Carpenter made that. But was it 90s? 94. Wow. You made me. Now you would destroy me. Why? You murdered my brother. <laughs> murdered? We finally got to the mummy. Yeah. And I think besides Bram Stoker's Dracula, this is like the second big. This one's probably bigger because it had a bigger legacy. Yeah. This was like the top one. And, and probably um, box office was way bigger on this as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, this came I, out a weird time, too, because I think what uh, Star Wars Episode One had just come out prior, and then this came out, and then no, something this else came out came before. Out. This 99 came. may have been one of the greatest years for movies ever. Was this 99? 99? Yeah. yeah. 99. 99. It was 99. Yeah. Yep. We literally just said it in the beginning. <laughs> he doesn't You're listen right. to anyone but himself. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that was like a big year. Mm-hmm. And uh, this movie is great. I love this yeah. movie. <laughs> I just, Maybe not great, but I do love this movie. I just saw it for the first time today. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Like, how did you miss this? I saw two and three in the theaters because I was working at the theaters. Okay. The third one. Yeah. And then I've seen 
parts of this and I was like, oh no, I've seen that movie before. Yeah. And then I'm just watching it in my office this morning before this review and I was like, oh, I've never fucking seen this movie yeah. before. This is the best one out of the trilogy. Oh, hands down. Well, yeah. I don't know. Scorpion King 3 with Billy Zane. I think that's the gold standard no. of the Mummy, <laughs> the mummy uh, series. Mummy Cop. Well, wait, no, if you yeah. like Billy Zane so much, why don't you play Kingdom Hearts? Because he's the main bad guy in that. Video games are for children. Anyway, the- <laughs> uh, let me tell you about Mummy 3. Okay. It was uh, the <laughs> summer of 2008. Mm-hmm. Terrible summer, other than the Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, just an awful summer. And, like, I was dating this, lack of better word, like, real bitch. I'm going to uh, kill you. <laughs> it was me. Oh, yeah. You dated and she Tony? was like, I really want to see Sadly. The Mummy 3. So he I gave really me an wanna... ultimatum. He was just like, look, we're going to go to the movies, but you're allowed to pick the movie. And I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> so it was either <laughs> either between uh, Step Brothers and The Mummy 3. And I wanted to. Oh, my God. But, but I did it to be an asshole. I was like, let's go see The Mummy 3. No, you wanted to see it. it. You were no, no, excited no. for it. No, no, because they recasted Evie. Yeah. I was oh. not excited for that. So Mummy 3 was pretty bad. There, that was the one. There, with there the... was no chemistry with anybody no. in that cast. Like, it's That's bad. the one with Jet Li? Yes. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Yeah, I remember when that was out. Yeah, I yeah. broke up with that girl, and things <laughs> but, have been pretty great ever since. Anyway. Yeah. I'm yeah. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Stephen Summers. Yeah. What did he do before this? Deep Rising. Deep Rising, which People I really, really like. want us to do Deep Rising. Yeah. Uh, we got to see if that ranks. I, I, I've been wanting to revisit mm-hmm. Deep Rising. This one with the tentacle monster. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah so let's let's get into this this classic, this yeah. modern day classic. Opens up with a digital city, which actually doesn't look that bad. It's dated. <laughs> yeah. But it's not. Not as dated as other things in this no, movie. No, 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 no. I was saying, like, when I was watching, I watched it uh, on the big TV mm-hmm. uh, here when I was, you know, rendering out the Batman and Robin episode, which for some reason had to be two hours long. (laughs) So when one thing gets mixed up, it took like three hours to render. Thank you, Newt. I wanted to enjoy my Sunday, but don't worry, Newt. I got the episode out. I watched. Thanks, Newt. Yeah. What? No, you got to ruin a Sunday. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm watching Digital City, and I'm expecting, like, bad CGI, but I'm looking at it, I'm like, no, this still, yeah. it, it not necessarily holds up, but it's like one of those things where I'm like, it looked cooler back then, mm. but it doesn't look terrible now. Yeah. It's like a decent Digital City. It doesn't look as bad as the stuff we saw in Batman and Robin. No, yeah. no, yeah, because <laughs> we watched, yeah, we watched that recently, mm. and it's like, no, this is a hundred times better yeah. than that. Um, and you know what? The green screen with Emotep looking out looks a lot better than Devil's Advocate with say, Keanu Reeves. Did you say Emotep? Emotep. 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 Emo would sound like he's like into My Chemical it's Romance. Emo. Like, he is kind of a fucking yeah, crybaby, well, yeah. so he is Emotep. <laughs> that, all right, guys, I want some fan art of, uh, what's what's the actor's name? Arnold Vosloh mm-hmm. with like an emo haircut. I saw that online. <laughs> There's apparently an entire mummy meme shit posting group. Oh, yeah. But I found something interesting. Emotep was actually the name of an architect who developed the first pyramids in ancient Egypt, mm-hmm. most notably the Pyramid of Dajir. Uh, at Squara, sorry if I fucked that up. Our Egyptian demographic yeah. is screaming right now. <laughs> In uh, 2600 BC, his ability uh, was such that he was later to be descended from the gods, and his name uh, actually uh, means the one who comes in peace. <laughs> Meanwhile. <No>. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Meanwhile, this guy is uh, cucking the pharaoh. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, isn't it not even like the pharaoh's wife, it's his mistress? Yeah. Yeah. And what's funny is... Uh, the mistress, I love how mistresses were just like a totally yeah, cool yeah. thing. And everyone, nobody was narcs back then. They just let it go. And, and apparently they, like had, today. they had to paint a bikini on her for no. TV viewings. Yes. Because all she was wearing was body paint and like jewelry. Yeah. yeah. And she uh, was the first Marta in Arrested Development. Yes. There's three girls who yep. play Marta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. So they're in love. Yeah. They they kill the pharaoh. Did you also know that the opening voiceover was originally intended to be read by Imhotep, but then in post-production, the director went, oh yeah, Imhotep wouldn't understand or be able to speak English, so they gave it to Ardeth Bay instead. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the character's name is Ardeth Bay. Okay. Yes. The actor's name is Oded Fair. I know. And I had to like think about it in my head. I'm like, wait, is that the right name? <laughs> but yes, uh, I like his I voiceover. Do, see, though. I do the research and all that kind of stuff. He takes all the credit for everything. He, uh, keep in mind, that's the guy who has the recurring meme of fake newts because he gets shit wrong all the time. I know, but I'm enthusiastic when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you should run for office on I that I should. <laughs> anyway. I'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
will be exceptionally cruel to Tony. So yeah, yeah it'll be great. Yeah, I'm gonna start like painting things I don't want touched by people. Yeah. Just gonna go around painting. Paint things. yourself. <laughs> that, that also cracks me up too. I don't want to be touched. Like the fact that, like, yeah, like he rubbed down her arm and everything, but like, what if she just like bumped into like a vase yeah, or something? Exactly. Like, who touched you? The we fucking gotta vase. Destroy that vase. <laughs> or she should be like, hey, we're in fucking Egypt. Like it's hot. Why would you paint this? This is gonna melt off. Yeah. I, I went out into the sun for five seconds. What did you expect mm-hmm. to happen? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they kill the pharaoh. And they thought they were going to get away with it, but they did not. No. Uh, I like how the gold priests try to help, and then the, the fucking magi just yeah, he, quickly he, put them in their place. Yeah, and then they also, like, pull him away from Anox on a moon, too. And then she just kills oh, herself. Yeah, she's yeah. like, my body is no longer his temple. And right. And then she's like, you're the only one who could resurrect me. And it's like, oh, I didn't, that's an option? Huh. <laughs> Thank God the movie's Which telling Which is funny, this. because later on, like, people could just read whatever the heck off the books, and it just works. Yeah, yeah but who so. would want to? <laughs> I know. Like, who's going to be like, the, the Pharaoh's gold lady? I'm like, I don't want to bring her back. <laughs> no. She's kind of mean. <laughs> I like the other Marta. <laughs> yeah, the other Marta who was in Blade 2. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so Emo... Imotep. Imotep, mm-hmm. not Imotep. I like Imotep better. When I was a young boy, <laughs> but father. <laughs> Imotep like grabs her body and it takes her to Hamanoptera, mm-hmm. which I wrote City of the Dead in my notes because I kept misspelling Hamanoptera and I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he tries to resurrect her. Hamana, 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 <laughs> <laughs> And he pulls as much as we're saying the CGI is good. He pulls CGI ghost out of CGI pull. Yeah, that was bad. It, this it, was dated. Yeah. It looked kind of like the fright the Grim Reaper and the Frighteners, no, but even worse. the Frighteners look better than that. Yeah, yeah. I get it's supposed to be water and liquid, mm-hmm. and we kind of shit on Batman and Robin for fucking that up, so we can't. We but have that to could shit have been really too. cool if it was like a more transparent, had like a skull face, kind of like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the, yeah. the ghosts have that kind of look to them. That would have been really neat. Well, this was PG thirteen. I know, and then Raiders of the Lost Ark was PG and has Harrison Ford shooting people point blank in the head. Well, this movie (laughs) has uh, Brendan Fraser shooting people and shooting people who then fall into fire and like stabbing people in the eyeballs. And then you find out they're all good guys. Yeah, I know. Sadder. Which is the same thing in Last Crusade, though, where the dudes, the guy who looks like Justin's dad, who's protecting the the Holy Grail, they're just killing his dudes willy nilly. And he's like, hey, I know you killed a bunch of those guys who are probably my cousins, but I'll help. Yeah. No. Speaking of which, uh, we're recording this a day after they revealed Harrison Ford looking sad on yeah. the set of Indiana Jones 5. Because he's with Kathleen Kennedy. And then a guy Why? wearing a Harrison Ford mask. Why does he keep agreeing to this? Why are they Maybe doing he's bored. That? He clearly keeps trying to die, but... It, like Disney has it packed with Satan. He keeps trying to crash planes, but he walks away from it. Like, you yeah. know, anyway, it's good. We're bringing up Indiana Jones. Yeah. This movie this is, is Indiana definitely Jones. trying yeah. to be the next Indiana Jones. It's like Indiana Jones and like Scooby-Doo mushed together. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, so, the, the thing I liked about it again, uh, because I hadn't seen it before was that it's sort of like a pulp serial but more so yeah. than Indiana Jones almost because Indiana Jones had this kind of like Lucas Spielberg vibe to it. That was where, more, not like pulp serial. That was like action adventure. Yeah, serial. this one yeah. feels more like a 50s action serial kind of movie mm-hmm. uh, or like a Doc Savage type of pulp yeah. magazine. Yeah. You know, it has some of that to it. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Imhotep, he's about to bring her back. Mm-hmm. But the Magi show up because they still care, apparently. Isn't that that Christmas story, the gift of the Magi? And it's like, <laughs> I had the thing, but you cut your hair. Isn't that what that is? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what that's it what's is. what's in this movie's based on? Yes. That Christmas yes. tale? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, they care because they want to get the dude who is part of the Pharaoh getting murdered. Yeah. Like, oh, that's why I mean, they went like, after him. What do you like? He's in not have, to a murder. I like, thought it was going to be like, you know, how police, like, once you cross state lines, they're like, oh, it's someone else's problem. Now. No. <laughs> once they go to the city of the dead, they're like, ah, pff, I'm not going there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they uh, they kill <laughs> they kill the emoteps mm-hmm. uh, priests. Oh, they mummify them alive. Yeah, yeah which all is the, awesome. all, every single one yeah. of them get mummified alive. Yeah, and you just hear them screaming in the background, and then they uh, they wrap up Emotep, which is cool. It reminds yeah. me of the Karloff version. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That almost looks like a shot out of the mm-hmm. Karloff one with them wrapping them up, and then like it's it's not enough to just put them in a thing alive. Because they they're doing the curse. Yeah, well, no, no, they throw beetles on yeah, them. Also, the curse. Curse. <laughs> you ever see that Aquatine episode? Jesus. Yeah, no, we know curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
for he would arise a walking disease, a plague upon mankind, an unholy flesh eater with the strength of ages, power over the sands, and the glory of invincibility. Why did they put the curse? Why did they put that specific curse on them? Because the movie had to happen. They're like, yeah. you're awful. We're going to curse you. It's like, okay, they're going to send him to hell. And they're like, no, you're so evil. If someone tries to bring you back, you're going to turn into God. Well, it's, it's not like, even oh, that. Oh, no. The actual like curse on him is like he's stuck as an undead forever. So like yeah. he's just aware of stuff or whatever, but he can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But but That's if his tor torture. But if someone brings But if someone brings him out, obviously then he can do whatever the heck he wants. That's why they're guarding over him for so long. Yeah. Why did they leave that part in? Why didn't they just do the first part of the curse? Someone's like, yeah. Because that's the whole curse. And then we're going to give him the power of the plague. Someone should have been like, wait, hold on. No, no. Strike Tony. that last yeah, one. Yeah, that wait a second. Fuck. Tony, let yeah. the movie happen. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we have to get to everyone in this movie being way too fucking sexy for their everyone own good. Everyone in this movie. Yeah. I want to fuck everybody in no, this movie. No, me too. Is insanely yeah. handsome yeah. and like, beautiful and yeah. Oh my god. Because I, I haven't seen Rachel handsome first, but okay. It's I haven't beautiful. seen Rachel Vice in anything in a long time, and I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, you didn't see her in Black Widow? I heard it came out last year. <clears throat> oh, that's right. She is in that movie. <laughs> oh yeah. shit. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I literally keep forgetting that movie was even <laughs> made. It's funny, Julia Louis Dreyfus was supposed to be introduced in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then it didn't come out in time, so now she's in uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Oh, I didn't see that either. She was yeah, in that? Yeah, she yeah. showed oh. up. She's and, like, in like it was supposed two episodes for oh. like, I don't know, a few minutes. But I'm it's supposed big... to be like, if you saw Black Widow, you'd be like, oh, she's back. But mm -hmm. instead you're like, who's she? That's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, they uh, do the curse on him. And then we get a really cool dissolve of the statue of Anubis. Like going I do like when they day. pour the scarabs in on him. I was like, that's awesome and terrifying at the same time. Yeah. And they ate him slowly. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I mean, eventually he got out of the wrappings and he probably just squished all of Well, them, yeah, right? he was like scraping at the inside of the sarcophagi. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't just... And, and he managed to like sketch a little note yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> put a little note in well, there. I guess it would be like if you were in hell, like eventually you just get used to it. Like they're chewing on him and he's like, yeah, whatever. And he's just <laughs> <laughs> etching. Yeah, so we uh, we cut to not modern day, but like mm -hmm. the 20s, I believe. Yeah. Well, the, the opening title sequence of The Mummy is so 1999 that it's Oh, yeah, it's all good, CG, like, and then it uh, explodes, and it's and got the from the... Yeah. It reminds me of, like, Armageddon's yeah. Uh, opening. <laughs> yeah, so then there's a battle at mm -hmm. the City of the Dead, and I like that the leader of Brendan Fraser's army just leaves. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> he sees them all charging, he's like, no way. And then, yeah, and then Benny, the dude... Benny, the best character. Yes. You know what I like about Benny. He only cares about himself. There's no level he won't stoop to to just protect his own self-interest. And he doesn't care who he screws over in the process. I really relate to Benny. I bet you do. So anyway, he's do. the best character in the yeah. movie. Benny's no, also he's in, not. Yeah, Benny is the best no, character in the movie. Benny is in the completely underrated and underappreciated uh, Lord of Illusion. You ever see he Lord is? of Illusion? The Clive Barker movie. I, I had he's a, a bit he's of like it. a David Blaine type magician, oh. and Famke Janssen is his wife. Back when Fam, well, I mean she's still hot, but like this was like prime pre yeah. X Men, and he, uh, he's great in that movie. He gets killed in There Will Be Blood. Yes, he's the At guy Color of Night. He's in Color of Night as well, where Bruce Br Bruce Willis's penis floats. <laughs> In a pool, and it wasn't him because he was like, I don't have a big penis. Oh, I remember that movie. Yeah. I've seen that movie. Anyway. And then the girl makes it, she has sex with him, and then she makes a mistake while naked. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe one day my life will be like that. <laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> so Benny also leaves, which yeah. is great. Which mm -hmm. is great. Then there's a big battle. Uh, and this is when <laughs> when uh, they run into like the tomb thing or whatever, and uh, oh. Brenda Fraser thinks he's like gonna hold the door or something, but then he closes the door and he's like, "Don't you close that door!" Don't you close that door! <laughs> Again, I really relate to Benny. Mm -hmm. I I've done stuff like that, like that's such an asshole. The story of Penhurst, which okay, have I told the story of Penhurst yeah, Asylum in I've this in this story. before? I don't think so. Like you about know how about the story, yeah, like how it. the people who were kept there were no, like no, 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 not treated. that. I mentioned oh. that. No, me and my friends went to Penhurst before it was like a public attraction mm -hmm. when it was still just an abandoned mental asylum. Yeah. Um, here's my memory of the situation. <laughs> we we walked into one of the buildings, mm -hmm. had our flashlights around, and then I saw someone else with the flashlight in the building, and I said, "Oh my God, there's someone here." Let's all run. And then we all ran away. Now, my friends tell the story a little differently. Apparently, they were looking around and they saw someone with a flashlight. And then when they looked back, I was already running toward the van and I didn't warn them. 
you know, Mandela effect. Your memory's not the What's best. What's that thing called unreliable narrator? <laughs> yeah. That's it's, you. <laughs> it's also hard to take him seriously because he, was, he looks like the dollar store Sala. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so yeah, uh, Betty. Me and Betty. I also, my, you know, my favorite Reservoir Dog is Mr. Pink. Yeah, the guy a, who hid under the stairs, mm-hmm. waited for everyone to kill each other, and then took off the time. Says a lot about you. <laughs> I love running away from danger. Yeah. So like, if something ever happens, like with us, can we just kill him and be like, yeah, I don't know? Oh, because it. we're gonna need a shield. Yeah. And we would have a meat shield, and we would be fine. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you and I are okay, this joke can continue. Yep. Everyone else is completely dispend- exposable. Or so, expendable. Expendable. I exposable? Can't. Exposable. <laughs> yes. Okay. So yeah, this battle I mean, they will be good. if they're not behind the Exactly, shield, yeah. So. <laughs> I noticed in the beginning of this movie that uh, this is not trying to be horror no. at all. There's some horrifying sequences in it, but yeah. they... They clearly went full in on Indiana Jones action. Yeah. And it worked. It worked better than trying to make The Mummy a superhero yes. franchise, which was attempted years later. This feels like the first parts of the Caribbean movie. It does. Yeah, yeah. you know. It does. It's also. And it just progressively gets worse. I know. It just progressively gets yeah. worse. Again, except for Scorpion King 3 with Billy Zane. Gold standard. Why do you love Billy Zane so I just much? Really I love like Billy, Billy Zane, Zane too. I said to Tony yesterday, I was we were putting up the wall of the podcast studio, yeah. and I'm like, well, you know that yesterday was the 25th anniversary of the Phantom, and he's like, Ryan, if we ever get big enough, can we have Billy Zane in? And Ryan was like, on so bad. The- he's like not doing anything right I know, now. I know. So I like- follow him on Instagram. Yeah, Billy. Come on the show. Billy Zane, who is not Arnold Foslow. No. People get them confused a lot. How? It's a thing. The internet gets them confused. They're, t- no, they're completely different. So, Brandon Fraser. Both hot, though. Uh, he goes to a statue of Anubis and it scares all the guys' horses away. Mm-hmm. And then there's a big, scary face on the ground. Yes. It's, it's his face. Is it that Nemo mm-hmm. Yeah, that's him. He's stuck in that thing. But he can, he can just make the sand into his face, even it, though he's dead. He's still like a, cur- he's, still, he's an undead curse. Yeah, he's still like cognizant. So he, but he, like, that's all he can do is just pretty much. Well, until he's yeah. released. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why doesn't he do it more often? There's not anybody else around. He can't really go anywhere. Well, they're, they're like camped out there for like two days later in the movie. Why wasn't he making scary faces? Everywhere? Because he was doing other shit at that point. He was also like, oh man, they might release me. You guys yeah. are making up a lot of lies. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we then cut to two years later, I believe, mm-hmm. and we meet Rachel Wise. Okay, so it is two years later. All right, yes. I didn't get that because I was like, wait, how did his hair get all George of the Jungle-like <laughs> in prison? Uh, and she's a wacky librarian. She's so fucking hot. Holy, holy shit. Uh, Newt, can, can we talk? Can we talk? Being a little too thirsty in episodes lately. No, no Rachel Vice episode... in this movie, her eyes are like fucking mesmerizing in she this is movie. Cute. The only thing yeah. that like kind of irks me, but like it's like the 20s, is her like very thin lined eyebrows. But they look better when she goes in that like cute like Middle Eastern. Yeah. Like, when she appropriates that village's culture. Yeah. Because everyone she else. Has no clothes. Are you kidding me? That's not a defense. <laughs> and that they apparently. Fly. What are you doing? That yeah, doesn't exactly. fly. Exactly. Exactly. How do you know I'm not the. <laughs> Because we know, Tony. Yeah, somebody keeps talking about the Italians. Listen, listen. He's Italian and Irish. Listen, Southern Italy was invaded by a lot of... Do you know he's Irish? Oh, he's Irish, too. Mother's side. Yeah. Oh. Southern Italy was... Yeah, he likes to hide that. Boy, that breaks the narrative, huh? Mm. Italy was invaded by a lot of cultures over the years. Mm -hmm. Who's to say I'm not? Anyway. (laughs) She knocks over... Did you ever hear about how the Moors conquered Sicily? I can tell you that. Anyway... (laughs) She knocks over like all of the fucking. They did it in one shot. Yeah, one take. They did that. It's like a domino scene. effect. So yeah. why would you ever stack your shelves like that? That is literally an accident waiting to happen. It was. The I don't 20s. know. You're the one making up excuses for this movie. What's your excuse for this? It was a, my water. It was a fun set piece. Yes. I like when she's up on top of the ladder yeah. and she's like trying not to fall. And then Eric Avari, who's not F. Mary Abraham from Thirteen Ghosts. I knew him from Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. You know what I saw him in? Oh, I, he's also in uh, Stargate, which we've covered. Oh, that's right. Also based in Egypt. And I think he had one scene in Master of Disguise. Wow. Which is also an episode we covered. All right, I'm in that episode, so I've totally seen it. <laughs> but yeah, he basically comes in and he's like, you're so fucking stupid, <laughs> Rachel Wise. I hate you. And she's like, well, you hired me because I'm so great. He's like, I'm doing it because you're dead parents, you mm-hmm. dumb idiot. It's like, wow, <laughs> really mean. Like, why? You can fire. Like, uh, how? And she's like, one day I'm going to leave uh, the director of uh, Requiem for a Dream for James Bond. 
Didn't she? Didn't she break up with? Uh, what's the director of Requiem for a Dream? Uh, oh, for Daniel Craig. Um, oh my God. Fucking. He's like what's a really name? brilliant filmmaker, but he talks like a fucking New York cab driver. Oh my God. Arfnowski. Darren, Darren Arfnowski. Yes. She left him. She for... left him. She had a baby with him, I think, and then she left him for Daniel Craig. Because hmm. they were making some like movie about like a haunted house or something like that. Oh, I saw that movie. It sucks. Yeah. Oh my god, that movie's fucking awful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dream House, I think it's called. It's All right, because she's in um, the Fountain, which I love that movie, and everybody tells me it's pretentious bullshit. I've never seen it. It's really good. Yeah. Anyway, she's yeah. good in this movie. Mm -hmm. She's very adorable. Yes. Uh, Eric Avari is very funny. Mm -hmm. I usually like him and stuff. He never plays like a big role, but he's usually funny and stuff. Yeah. Uh, she goes into the mummy room. At the library. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a I, library and museum. And the yeah. whole thing was filmed in Morocco because Egypt was like, oh, we got our own shit going on. <laughs> and the studio had to take out kidnapping insurance on oh, yeah. everyone involved with, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, I have known my share of beautiful <laughs> Moroccan women in my time. <laughs> I have. So Jonathan shows up, her brother, and he's just desecrating some poor mummy's tomb. Yeah. This is really in, like, mean. Little sarcophagus. He's like, ha, 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 ha. And also, like, that I don't think person. they leave like gooey mummies just out in the open. Only like put that under glass. Or they were like, like I remember the very first time I ever went to a museum as a kid, and I saw a mummy like up close, and I was like, that's terrifying. Like I thought about <laughs> it a lot after that. You can like see like the bandages where the eyes. Yeah, were, like, yeah, Because they're not there. And it's yeah. it's crazy. Like I just you you see these movies as a kid, and no, oh, I dressed up as a mummy for Halloween. But then when you see it like in person, you're like, oh god, no. <laughs> mummy cop's face was actually based off a of mummy. Nice. We uh we found a picture. You can't tell with the wrappings, but when he takes his wrappings mm -hmm. off. We found a picture of some mummy that looked like it was kind of smirking. Yeah. So the guy who made the mask, I sent him the picture. I'm like, I want this face. That's why like Mummy Cop kind of has this like goofy face when he takes <laughs> the bandages off. So yeah, Jonathan mm -hmm. tells her that he found something mm -hmm. at a dig in wherever, but he's lying. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, "What is this box? Tell me what it is. Is it something cool?" And she's like, "Oh my god, it's got it's got a map in it." And they bring it to Eric Avari, and they're like, "What is this map?" He's like, "Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Oh no, oh, no it's like, on fire." No, it was. It's not. What is this map? They were like, "We think we know this goes to Hamana." Uh, Han, Han, oh my god, I can't. Hamana Matata. Hamana <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I cannot talk. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, then he goes and he's just like, "Oh, totally not." It's like putting so this obvious. He's like, "Oh," and he's He's like, "Oh, well, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. City's dead, lost." It's like, "Wow, you should really care more about this, shouldn't you, Eric <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, because Jonathan apparently did not get it from a dig. He pickpocketed it off of some drunk American at a bar. Yeah. yeah you know who it was? Who? Rick O'Connell. Yes. <laughs> Brandon Fraser's character, Rick O'Connell. Dudley who, do right himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. In my, uh, in my notes when I was first writing it, I kept doing McConnell. Like, I wonder, do I use the name McConnell a lot? Mitch McConnell. Oh, oh, I was going to say, that's my mother's maiden name. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of your mom. No. Why are you thinking my mom? Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I think about that bullet I dodged and I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ian. <laughs> yeah. He anyway. Doesn't, he doesn't watch this. <laughs> so they go to Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> so they go to Brendan Fraser, who's now in jail. Mm -hmm. And I love the guy there. Who is the, who is the warden? He's from something. He's a comedian, he, right? Uh, yeah, but I also isn't he also the the dude who owns Anakin in Phantom Menace? Watto? Yeah. Like the voice of Watto? I think it's the voice of Watto. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know, but I like it. He's like, yeah, we arrested him because he apparently was looking for a good time. And then it turns out he's being sentenced to death because <laughs> he had too good of a time. Where are they taking him? To be hanged. Apparently, he had a very good time. Uh, yeah, but they're basically like, hey, my brother pickpocketed off of you. Uh, can you lead us to the city? He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Get me out of here. Mm -hmm. And then he kisses Rachel Wise against her will without her consent. Which so cancel Brendan Fraser. But it was the twins. If Fraser. he came at me like that, I'd be like, 
please. <laughs> but she didn't. Consent. She didn't say that. Uh, later, she totally talking about like, oh, why? Like that. This is the the like, last review I did with you. Bugs Bunny kissed Michael Jordan without his consent. What is going on? But when she's on the boat, and then like, let's go go all the way back to King Kong. What is it about your reviews that this keeps coming up? When she's on the boat, though, she's like bumping into shit, and she's like can't stop thinking yeah. about oh, her yeah. kiss. She, she she's does like, oh yeah, she does take. Get... It's not even that good of a kiss. Like, <laughs> she, she's thinking about it. So yeah, she has to like negotiate with the warden, and then like if I can. Brendan Fraser was like getting hung. And apparently he almost died in real life. They had to resuscitate him on the really? set. Yeah. Uh, it, because appara- usually they don't have that on your neck. Appara- it's a yeah, Apparently there was a mistake and Rachel Weisz said in uh, press about the movie that uh, his heart stopped beating and he had to be resuscitated. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Well, luckily he lived. He lived to go through that awful divorce, which nearly wrecked him. But to and be then in- someone inappropriately touching him. Yeah. Like Hollywood talking- executive. But yeah. Doom Patrol. Is fucking great. I think Doom Doom Patrol Patrol might be my favorite DC show. I still didn't see season two, but season one's awesome. It's really good. Uh, Yeah, so he's like hanging, and Evelyn finally uh, negotiates. Mm -hmm. She's like, you can come with us and take some of the treasure or something. He had a percentage or whatever, and then he ends up going down from like 40 something to to like like 25. 25, Yeah. 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 And she's like, ah! Deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wait, there it is. McConnell. McConnell looks sexy. <laughs> in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he's got the long hair, and she's like, "He's such a brute." And then he shows up at the boat, looking, looking like really handsome, and she's like, "Oh my god, shit. I love Brandon." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but look at like George of the Jungle. Like again, it's like holy shit. Like that dude yeah. was fucking in good shit. This yeah. was like prime Brendan Fraser. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And then uh, post Encino Man, Brendan Fraser. It turns out there's another team. Remember, he was in the Kids in the Hall movie for one scene. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's the dude. Kids who, in the Hall movie? He's no, in, son-in-law movie. No, no, he was in Brain Candy oh. for one scene. He's in a placebo group, and he's like, is it sugar? My my body's telling me it's sugar, and he's got pimples all over his face. He's just in one scene. I like he shows up in Son-in-Law, and it's implied that he's the Encino Man. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's eating a banana. <laughs> it's like, oh, the Encino Man went to college. Tony, Tony when was the last time you wheezed the juice? <laughs> Wait, is Eric Avari in that? He's the guy that goes, no, he's in the juice. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. It's the mummy cinematic universe. <laughs> Fuck you, movie dumpster. We've got it. <laughs> yeah. So the American, the other Americans who are all like cowboys and shit, they're like, we're also going to Hominoptera. Yeah, we have our own dude that's been there before, too. They remind me of the American guys in Bram Stoker's Dracula as well. Like, yeah. Uh, Mina's like... You know the the Texan, yeah, the Rocketeer, mm-hmm. yeah. So they uh, <laughs> fucking Rocketeer is a great movie. Bre- Brandon Fraser realizes it's Benny. He finds him, and they're they're not happy mm-hmm. because Benny like almost killed him. And then he's literally about to kill Benny. Think of my, oh, yeah. <laughs> think of my children. Wait, I think, I think you don't have any children. I might one day. <laughs> Again, Benny's great. He's really, really great, and I'm sad he doesn't make it out of this movie. Spoiler. Mm. He gets what he deserves. Yeah. yeah. I really wanted him to come back in the sequel. <laughs> Benny's He's a mummy. <laughs> Benny's return. Yeah. So, yeah, Evelyn's about to crank one out. Mm-hmm. Because uh, she can't stop thinking about sexy Brendan Fraser. But then the Magi show up. Yeah. And then, like, even though they're good guys, they make sure the one guy looks scary as hell with his, like, wooden hand he has, with like, the claw. It's like the Velociraptor claw that yeah. Yeah, they had in Jurassic Park. Yeah. And he's trying to kill Rachel. She stabs him in the eye. Mm-hmm. With a candle. Yeah. yeah. That was lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a fan. Uh, <laughs> and what happens? Like, Brendan Fraser comes in and shoots him. He's just or, shooting And puts every- him in the fire. Yeah. And then he's like, I need the key. I need the key. And then this poor guy. So now he's blind. He has one hand. He's on fire. He like finally gets out. And then the Americans are like, there's a guy on fire. Let's shoot him. <laughs> they shoot him some more. And don't and forget like, that like, you know, uh, he was trying to go for the key. But then Jonathan goes and scoops it up and just yeah. runs. Right, right, right. And then right. he's chasing after Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan's the one that knocks him into yeah. the fire. Yeah. On yeah. Accident. yeah. He doesn't need the, uh, you know, Brendan Fraser doesn't need the key. It's it's up here, he yep. says. Well, no, no. No, the, the, map. Map, the map is map. what he doesn't the map, need. Because yeah. it's all up here. Here. Uh, yeah, so there's a big fire, big action scene, a lot of action scenes. Yeah, good stunts. You're, you're right. The mummy doesn't come in for a while, but the movie's so entertaining that mm-hmm. like, it yeah. doesn't bother you. There's a lot it. of set pieces that don't feel like we're leading to another set piece. Yeah. They feel fluid with the, the structure of the movie, and they're they're fun. They're adventure, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, they make it out. Mm-hmm. But Benny's got all the horses. And he's on the other side of the yeah. river. <laughs> Benny. The, the, the dialogue's uh, pretty good. Oh, God. Oh, 
Oh, hey, oh, Luke has got all the horses. Look, uh, looks to me that I've got all the horses. Hey, Betty, looks to me that you're on the wrong side of the river. And he starts kicking the water. <laughs> He's like cursing. <laughs> This movie, like the one-liners and the like, the dialogue it's is so great. Like, it, like it's so fluid and it just goes so well. Even like some of the jokes, like later on when um they're like setting up their camp and he's like swinging the rope around or whatever. It's and just yeah, it's perfect. It's, again, oh no, and he's trying to get the <laughs> <board>. <laughs> It's really good. But again, it's one of those things where that's why it feels like an old-fashioned adventure movie because there was this kind of sing-song dialogue to mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. where it's slapsticky and and uh, fun. It has like this kind of almost like a vaudeville yeah. style yeah. to it. Yeah. You know. So the next day, uh, Rachel Wise, she appropriates a village's culture. You oh, really you can't also, say this while you're wearing Oh, that. did you also know that her, uh, she's wearing a white white uh, nightgown, had to be digitally painted in because you could see everything yep. underneath? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and they take their I mean, camels. you can still kind of see stuff in the black dress, too. Yes, true, yeah. yep. They take their camels. I was looking, they like trust me. <laughs> oh, <same laughs> God. They, they meet up with, like, the other team, and mm -hmm. they decide to race to Hamanopter, which is, this feels very Indiana Jones. Oh, wait, it's like, forgot it's, to talk Talk about um, the Rick and Evie bonding scene when they're on the boat. When they actually oh, start yeah. their motor oh, there. Oh, yeah, because he's showing her his guns. He whips out the guns <laughs> thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, what was it? Uh, she starts to talk to him about the kiss, and he was just like, yeah, like, I was about to die. It seemed like a good idea yeah. at the time. Yeah, <laughs> like, just gets up and like, she's overthinking it, and he's like, I don't know. Yeah. I was going to die, like, lady. Mm -hmm. Like, what? You're way hotter than the dudes I was kissing yeah. in this Egyptian prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they uh, this scene feels really Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. where they're like, we have to wait for the sun to go here, so then it reveals yeah. the city. Yeah, the, I like how they all got there at the same time, too. Yeah. <laughs> what was, was it Delgado? Remember that movie that was about the race across the desert that came out? One second, I'll answer that in a second. Okay. I gotta blow my nose and cough. My like, okay. throat's all phlegmy. Hold on. So, <sighs> such Say something fun, we'll make a bonus video. So they raced to Hamanatra. They raced to Hamanatra. Which was invisible, but wasn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I like about this camel race is that Benny's stunt double looks nothing like Benny. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was really bothering me. I'm like, that's that's so not him. That's not my boy Benny. <laughs> you did him dirty. Yo, but that stunt double's great. They kick him off the camel and he gets run over by the camel. Like, holy shit, is yeah. he okay? <laughs> Did you ever see the movie The Last Samurai? The yeah. Tom Cruise movie. Oh, the movie you were thinking of, Hidalgo. Hidalgo. Which we have. And it's very, yeah, it's right there. Yes, really H good movie. Hidalgo is a movie about a race across the desert, but in Isn't the that with, uh, it was Vigo, 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 Vigo oh. It's a really good movie. The star of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin and I went to go see Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 last Friday at the Colonial Theater. Yeah. And he's only seen part one, so I explained to him the lineage of the movies, and he's like, wait, <laughs> what? But uh, yeah, in the movie The Last Samurai, uh, there's a stuntman who gets kicked in the head by a horse. That dude's dead. No, there's no way that guy, that stuntman survived. Like, he literally just got kicked in the head by a horse, <laughs> and it's just in the movie. I should watch Last Samurai again. I think we have that, too. It's all right. It was on the background of, like, a at a bar recently, and I was like, hey, I remember liking this movie. Mm -hmm. Ginger Snaps, too, but not Ginger Snaps? Yeah, I guess so. I've never seen Ginger Snaps, too. I just saw Ginger Snaps 1. Please. Oh, yes. We got to start that Wednesday show. Mm -hmm. So, they get to the city. Yes. Brandon Fraser gets there uh, first. Evie won. 90s feminism for you. The Evie won. has to win because she's so smart. There is a lot of like PC 90s feminism so in this. Remember when I grabbed that uh, box cutter? I'm literally about to get that for real and just stab him in the head. So anyway. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, they break up into like two teams. Mm -hmm. and Obviously, because like, that's how it was in the, the whole beginning of the movie anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to stay on Johanna's good side. I can't treat you like Crystal. Jesus. Sorry, I'm like I'm like dying at the second uh, the second. Hold on. Good. I'm gonna take a breath. It's the hat. Yeah, take the freaking hat off. No, no, no leave the it's hat. It's not off. the hat. He's just committed. Take the freaking hat He's off. He's committed to it's not the, the hat. Bit. It's just I went like outside earlier, and then everything hit me. <laughs> I'm about to hit you. So yeah, they're both investigating, and then I like when the other teams like, do they know something we don't? And then snobby guy from Titanic and Anaconda is like, do they know something we don't? They're led by a woman. What does a woman know? And then it cuts to her literally explaining everything. She knows so many things. And then she goes, what is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. There you go. <laughs> I never even played that game. Oh, really? Mm. I'm not a big Castlevania guy. Oh. 
I played the first one and I went too hard. Mm. And then I never played a Castlevania game. No, that's not true. The first Castlevania game I played was Castlevania 64. The one where like you take like three steps and like a tree gets struck by lightning and can kill you. Yeah. And then I was like, not interested. I played all the way up to Symphony of the Night. <sighs> You're a nerd. I know. I used to like video games. Video games are for children. That's what I've heard. Buy Eagle Island today. Race to the finish, overcome obstacles, and escape harsh environments with brand new abilities. And the twist? Owners of the original Eagle Island game will receive the Eagle Island Twist update for free. Twice the fun, all in one. Soar and explore in Eagle Island Twist. So yeah, they, uh, they enter the tomb, and they finally investigate it, and I like... Their excuse to get light down there. They're like, we have a bunch of mirrors. Like, this is legend. Yeah. Yeah, we have a bunch of mirrors that'll, like, reflect the light. And then Tim Curry dies. And I'm like, what was that? <laughs> and it uh, lights up. The, I love how it's beams for a second. And mm-hmm. they're like, we're not doing this beam thing. And then it just looks normal. And I like how the- it's just the one mirror they have to move to. Like, that was yeah. just the one that was out of the yeah. way. The 3,000 years, no other mirror <laughs> cracked or fell or and anything like, like that. <laughs> Keep this set. We're going to need it for the third act of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then they fight over the bottom of the Anubis statue. Yes. Yeah. Because he was half buried. And they're like, we were here first, we were here first. But then Evie realizes there's a tomb underneath. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, we can... We can split up. It's totally fine. Also, the one dude gets mad because she totally has the dude's toolkit that Rick stole for her. Oh, yeah, yeah. He did it to be nice. Like, oh, I got it from one of the Americans. They'll just keep putting their guns at each other. (laughs) Oh, I love this whole scene. They're constantly just aiming their guns every time they get into a disagreement. It's a good thing we've learned a lot since the 20s and advanced as a people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no no one just willingly pulls out their gun these days. No. no one ever sees a puppy in the street and goes, I need to shoot it, and then shoots their kid on accident. <sighs> that happened this weekend. Did you see that news story? Yeah, that's yeah, insane. I did. I mean, it's terrible, but it's like, it was a puppy. That lady really overreacted. And, and it literally just escaped from the house. Like, it wasn't like it was just like running around for yeah. a while. It literally just escaped from the house, and the person was following behind it. And they were on bikes. <laughs> like, just bike away. Anyway, uh, so when they're underneath the statue, they're like, we're going to dig out from underneath them. So everyone, I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. I'm dying. Why don't you take the allergy medicine? Like, it was offered to you like 10 minutes ago. Do you have that allergy medicine? I get it Can I have that allergy medicine? Let me. <sighs> I was doing good. And I just. Give me a second. You sound like you're like, hi. <laughs> I was fine all morning until I went to Target. Oh. Uh, when they were going to the uh, the city, it cuts to the Magi at night. Yeah. And it's literally just the same shot from earlier, but they color corrected yeah. it to be blue. Yep. <laughs> so now they're underneath the statue. Yes. And they're digging underneath it. And I like how they keep making fun of the Americans, mm-hmm. but then they remember O'Connell's American. Yeah. No, and no. he's not offended because Americans don't get offended. No. Right? Not, no, no one I've ever met. Not online. at all. He's not like those pansy British people like the snobby Titanic guy. Speaking of that guy. Why it's hard to like, it's why like people call me a liberal, mm. but it's really hard to get behind left-wing people because they're so fucking offended by <laughs> everything. So it's like, man, I You hate- know what the problem is? They haven't watched The Mummy starting they Brandon should. Fraser. Yep. <laughs> Can bring the people together. <laughs> oh, it really a- is the ultimate family movie. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of snobby British guy, what an asshole. Uh, they're like, wow, there might be uh, a booby trap on there. Get the diggers to do yeah, it, and, and then, then it's just like, oh, like and Egyptians. Then he, yeah, and then he's yelling at them to like do it faster and everything. Mm-hmm. And too. they're like, like Holy uh, crap. and of course they open up and they get hit with pressurized salt acid, yeah, and which they is just cool. they just melt. I'm like, that's horrifying. Yeah. I imagine they didn't die, right? They probably just were horribly I mean, I guess injured. it depends, like how, like, because if it like penetrated in your brain or something, you're kind of like screwed. Didn't, uh, uh, what was the guy who found King Tut's tomb? Uh, I forget. People said he was cursed or something. Yeah, and he really, he cut himself while shaving and got an infection, and that's how he died. But <laughs> Evie's apparently named after the woman who came with him on the uh, that expedition to yeah. Tutankhamun's tomb. So luckily, when those people were burning alive, uh, whatever they did releases the mummy from its tomb, and I think mm-hmm. it almost kills Jonathan or O'Connell. Yeah. Like it yeah, lands like it right in front down. of them. Yeah, and uh, while this is happening, the Fat Warden, uh, who's still there for some reason. He's going around collecting beetle scarabs. He thought it was tur- blue gold. Yeah. And then they turn out to be real beetles. Mm-hmm. And then it goes into his brain. 
but it looks terrible when it's under his skin. It looks really bad. Yeah, it's kind of like, I think The Matrix did it better when mm-hmm. the thing is in the guy's yeah. stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. year, too. That was a good year. Yeah. I remember seeing both in theaters. 99 man. was a fucking great year for movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, Phantom Menace, but it was well, exciting at the time. Again, and it was also the first year I worked at a movie theater, too, so I remember being able to see <laughs> That's when everything. they were still magical to you? Exactly. <laughs> Before the world broke me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like how he just runs into a wall and just fucking dies. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And no one seems to investigate it. What uh, happens I to mean, the beetle? <laughs> they kind of do because they start, uh, like, later when they're talking at the campfire, they're talking, like, yeah, we found these, like, in his pockets and stuff. So, mm-hmm. it, like, kind of alludes that. Oh, like, yeah. They, oh, they yeah. hint that it's going to happen to the brother, which it does much later. But you think it's going to happen right there when he puts his hand in the. But it's booze. But it's yeah. booze. And it's like, he's a low life, but he's got good taste. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> and I don't appreciate, like, people shouldn't drink while they're on the job. No. no I think no. that's really bad luck. And then uh, at that night, uh, the Magi show up Mm -hmm. and try to murder everyone. You also, again, you're just glossing over the romance. (sighs) Oh, my God. Evie gets drunk. Okay, okay. So let's let's stereotype the female member of the crew wants to talk about the romance part. Yeah. Okay, continue. But, I like romance. They had great chemistry together in this yeah, movie. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. Like, it's great. It is. But um, is basically good. just, you know, they're just kind of talking about, like, uh, you know, I understand, like, these guys doing, like, what they're doing here. Yeah, he doesn't know why she's What there. your brother's doing here, but what are you doing here? And then she gets all, like, super offended because also she's drunk as hell. Oh, yeah, mm. this is when she's like, what is a place yeah, like me doing, doing in a girl, girl like yeah. this? Yeah. <laughs> and then the... I am proud of what I am. <laughs> I'm a librarian. I am a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Much like. And then like. she says she's going to smooch him and then just passes yeah. out in his lap. Yeah. You know who else was a librarian? George Bush's wife. Anyway. Um, and she looked exactly like a young She looked wife. exactly mm-hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> When they make a movie about his life again, yeah. they better get Rachel Weisz mm-hmm. to play <laughs> Megan Fox playing Barbara Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, so the Magi are attacking. Can I talk about this part now? Yeah, you can can do it now. And they're all murdering each other horribly. Mm -hmm. And I like how Brendan Fraser just lights the dynamite. He's like, all right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do here? Reminds me of uh, Kurt Russell in The Thing. Yes. He's like, I'll blow us all up. I don't fucking care. (laughs) And Kurt Russell was originally one of the people they wanted to play Rick's character. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Not really the young heartthrob. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I would have. They talked to him. It would have been fine. They but... talked to him, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Brad Pitt, and they all passed. Brad Pitt would have been good. Yeah. Yeah, but Brendan Fraser, I think they, they mm-hmm. nailed it with that yeah. one. Uh, but he's basically like, look, all right, we'll stop fighting because I don't want to get blown up because I'm, I'm oh dead fair. I got to be in a lot of things after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, please leave. Yeah, leave this place or die. <laughs> please leave. You have, you have to be gone by the morning. How about like, you guys have been protecting this, your family, our ancestors have been protecting this. They have to leave now. Like, no. not, we're not going to wait because we know how you people are and you're going to fuck it up. Wait a minute. Hold on. I just looked at my notes. The flirting happens after this scene. So you didn't have to interrupt me. Mm. Which, because I said after a bunch of people died, they decide to flirt. <laughs> Which I think is a bad <laughs> time to flirt. No, it brings well, people they together. died, so we mean start drinking, right? When people, okay. are, when people are in, like, life-threatening things, they, they want, like, comfort. Like, that's why, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. God, I have so many McConnells instead of O'Connells. I thought I got them all. So yeah, the next day, the Americans, they open up the chest. Even though it says, please, for the love of God, don't open up this chest. You're mm-hmm. all going to die horrible, painful deaths. And Benny, being a genius, is like, no, nah, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Which, again, I've been known to do. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been known to hide and run away from... from what We had a, we had a apartment party years ago in college, and I heard someone say, cops... And then I like quietly went into the bathroom and locked the door and like hid in the shower until the cops went away and they never. But found they meant the TV show. Do you know that they could just break open that door and find you? You would. And then would I'd say have... I was kidnapped. Oh no! You should have said, <laughs> no. "Oh, I was just showering. What's going on here?" Oh, you know what I did once. All right, so one time. I didn't hear any music. Yeah. In the water. <laughs> so one time I was at a house party. Again, this is my with kid and play. Yes. Uh, self-preservation, you know, always look out for yourself. Be like Benny. That's my motto. <laughs> BLB. Yeah, we were at a party and then there was like a big fight happening mm-hmm. and the cops got called and we were all underage. And then I quietly left 
out the back door and then I ran several blocks away. And then my girlfriend called me saying, where did you go? And I'm like, oh, I'm outside you getting there. What happened? Yeah, I left her. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, because, well, one, it was actually funny when the See, fight. I think I dodged the bullet. No, I do too. When the fight, Thank you for breaking when up When the fight was happening, I was like, oh, I'll protect you. But then I kind of like got her in front of me. And then if, if you, I'll tell you who it was afterwards and you'll stop caring. Holy anyway. shit. So yeah, so yeah. Then then I heard cops, and I'm like, I don't want to get arrested, so I ran away. And then she was like, Where'd you go? I'm like, Oh, I went out to get some air. What, what's happening? What's happening? Are there are the cops still there? Are the cops still there? And she's like, Oh no, they left. And then I went back because I watched the Mummy. I learned how to avoid dangerous Chival situations. Chivalry. Thy name is Tony. Exactly. Exactly. I am always putting myself in harm's way for women. How's that working out for you? Not too great, but exactly. I still but I still do it. I was held up at gunpoint and I stood in front of my friend. Yeah, yeah, I told that story on here and Crystal was impressed. And then I had to tell Crystal, you could be lying. I wasn't there. You, you can ask the other person. Were we dating at the time? No, no, we weren't. Okay. I was gonna say, I'm like, I don't remember caring. I so. told I told my I told my gun story and then people made fun of me. People made okay. fun of me for peeing my pants, but I had a gun in my mouth and I was 15. But it was a fake gun. Mine wasn't. Mine was real. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a fake one. No, it just it wasn't loaded. Uh. Yeah. But I didn't know that. So, Benny runs away from danger. Mm -hmm. They open up the thing. They find the jars with the organs in them. Yeah. And then, meanwhile, uh, O'Connell... No, no, don't they get the book first? And then... Uh... There's the book... And then the jars. Because it's the it's the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead. It's not the gold book that they thought it was going to be. That's no, end, no. Yeah. But that's yeah. also was somewhere in that area. Yeah. But they they were mad. Like the uh, Americans were mad because they wanted actual treasure. And yeah. then uh, they kick the little box or whatever. And then Treasure's they find the jars. Yeah. yeah. He's like, like, yeah, that. there's your treasure, gentlemen. I like that one of them is broken. Uh, and I'll mention why I like it in a second. Mm. Uh, but yeah. I have a theory for that, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so then underneath, uh, they finally open up the sarcophagus and the mummy's still gooey. Or no, they say juicy. Juicy. They're like, he's still juicy. Mm. And it's cool, like, practical, like, yeah. mummy. It's only when it comes alive that you went, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It was good for the time, though. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, they then that's when they saw that he was like carving, like, death is not the end. I'll come back, maybe. Death mm -hmm. is only the beginning. Right, right, right. Is that your motto? Death is death what? is but a door. Time is but a window. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> to quote I'm going to carve that onto my uh, coffin. They're like, he die. really liked Ghostbusters, too. <laughs> well, someone had to. Exactly. Someone had to like Ghostbusters, too. <laughs> so Evelyn, like is telling everyone about evil curses. Mm -hmm. And I think she steals the book. Yeah, because yeah. the dude's sleeping. And there's so much stuff about, like, evil curses. Everyone's always talking about the evil curses. You can't go five minutes in this movie without someone but going, there's an evil curse. I and like when like she starts to read it and the, t the fire flickers and he goes... That happens a lot around here. It oh, happens uh, yeah. when they're about to, like, dig in the thing, too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And of course she reads it like an idiot. Yeah, out loud. Yeah, out loud. And then of course it, you know, we keep getting shots of the live action mummy and then it cuts to a CGI mummy staying still and you're like, it's gonna come to life. It's gonna come to life. And then he screams. Like, these days, well, the these days did. it would all be digi yeah. digital still, but it would blend better. But like you would have a live action one and then digitally transition to it screaming. Yeah, then your, uh, was it snobby guy is like, no, you must not read from the book. Oh then, yeah, yeah. yeah and then the, tra Lois the trailer <laughs> line. Which yes. He's like, yeah. Yes. And then, uh, cause it brings all the plagues from the Bible, mm -hmm. but I don't think it does all of them. I didn't see any firstborn children die. I so. didn't either. Yeah. I didn't either. Uh, but yeah, so the locusts show up mm -hmm. and I, I do like when he's holding the book and he's, and just he's covered, covered in, in them. So like what some of the people done? get eaten and then some of the people just don't. Yeah. What's that all about? Anyway, uh, underneath Benny, poor old Benny. Yeah. Cause they all run back inside too. Yeah. Oh wait, no, we're not up to Benny yet. Uh, American with bad eyes. Poor bastard. His glasses get shattered by Benny. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the scene is actually pretty creepy. In a movie that doesn't have a lot of horror in it, I'm yeah. glad they uh, remember to add horror stuff in. Mm -hmm. And I like where he's just like, he can't see the mummy. The mummy's all like blurry yeah. and walking around him. And then he presumably rips his eyes and his tongue and out. His tongue out. Uh, and then what happens? Uh, a bunch of beetles separate the guys, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And Evelyn gets thrown through a trap door. Yeah, she because uh, 
was it the guys jump over to a platform on the side yeah. so the beetles can't like actually go to them. Is that when the guy gets dissolved? Like the beetles yes. just swim yeah. over yeah. him yep. and he's just gone. Yeah, they move he, like water. And then Why Evie jumped jo- to the other side and then she fell through the door. Yeah. Why would John, Paul, George, and Ringo do that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're going to eat this British guy. What about uh, uh, Pete Best? Was he there Poor too? Pete Best. Poor Pete Best. <laughs> Fucking, I know suicide's like a, a sin to people, but imagine like Pete Best kills himself and he gets up to heaven and like whoever's at the door just goes, oh no, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let him in. Yeah. He was home. He was, he left the Beatles. He was so kicked, anyway. kicked out of the Beatles right before they became big. <laughs> so yeah, the mummy confronts uh, well, the, Evelyn. The Beatles get the heck out and then they're like, where the heck did she go? And yeah. it cuts to her. They say heck a lot because yeah. it's the 20s. Yeah. So, they didn't uh, invent hell yet Mm-mm. so anyway uh they're gonna go get she sees the guy who the glasses yeah. guy and she's like help me he's like where's my tongue he's like you <laughs> took my tongue or whatever it was well because they oh, do no it. he says my eyes first yeah because they do it to him in the beginning they're like holding out and they cut yeah. his tongue yeah. out too because so. he's trying to like get pieces of his body back yeah, yeah. Yep. he's regenerating mm-hmm. but uh the mummy he reveals himself and she's yeah. like what the fuck <laughs> but the mummy he's uh he's into her he's into her because mm-hmm. it reminds him of his lost love <laughs> or does it? That's a reference to the sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he's like, I'm going to use her to bring back my lady friend. Which was a twist on the original, on the Karloff uh, mummy yeah. movie. Yeah. But, but the, but Karloff, he was trying to bring back his lady friend, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. And she was the reincarnation, just like in Dracula. So Right. She was yeah. the reincarnation. Mm-hmm. And this one, it's like, I'm just going to use her to, to yeah. reincarnate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I love when O'Connell comes in. And she's like, hey, we were looking for it. Oh, my God. Like, he's just horrified. They're, like, growling at each other. Yeah, they both yell at each other, mm-hmm. and then he just shoots them. <laughs> yeah, he shoots them and thinks that's it. And the Magi are like, well, you fucked up. We probably should have just let you blow up. I don't yeah. know why we didn't. Uh, the mummy's back. We got to stop him. Mm-hmm. An uh, hour into the movie, and I was yeah. saying to you guys before we shot this, I was like, knowing this guy's career after this movie... I'm shocked the restraint that he used yeah. in not having the mummy show up till an hour in. Yeah. Because you look at Van Helsing, which is just CGI diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Although, I don't hate it as much when I watched it recently. Oh, I hated it. I, I, so I saw it. I fell asleep in the production. I think the disappointment worn off. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, it's fine until Frankenstein shows up. Yeah. He sucks. I fell asleep watching it the, the first night it came out. And when I woke up, uh, Kate Beckinsale was made of clouds. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck did I miss here? So I went back and Not I watched much. it again. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah it's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> so Benny. Worse than G.I. Joe. Huh? Worse than G.I. Joe. Debatable. Uh, okay. I have to watch G.I. Right. Joe again. But yeah, Benny runs into the mummy. Which is my, this is my favorite scene. This is pretty movie. great. So he's yeah. going through all the religious stuff. Because yeah, he's trying to talk to him. So yeah. he's pulling up Why each thing Why would he like start like whatever Egyptian first? And that's what's, but that's what saves his skin is he pulls out the Star of he David. He pulls out the Star of David and then the mummy's like, ah, oh, the language of the slaves. I have use for mm-hmm. you. <laughs> yeah. But this whole uh, scene was just great. Again, of him just like anything he can do to stay alive. Yeah. He, I, have a, I have a Christian one. I again, have a Muslim again, one. Be like Ben. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, he, he, then he's like, you know, I have use for you. And then he's like, oh, like, where are these other sacred jars? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what I like about this is he's picking up the broken one. And I'm like, wow, they had to digitally like render that and have it jiggle a little bit. That was probably really impressive for the time. Yeah. They could have just did the regular jar, but like they... I think it's ILM, maybe? Mm-hmm. They really went above and beyond for this movie. And they had a no-gore rule where yeah. they couldn't show, like, guts and blood and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, because that had to be PG-13. Yeah. Which is funny, because you can have a million people being shot, but as long as you don't have blood, you're yep. good. <laughs> uh, also, I like when they're all running away, the, the, the rubber mummy hand comes yeah, out of the ground. Yeah, it's just like, you it's were like, super decomposed he, two seconds ago. Was he digging to have that dramatic effect? Yeah. Why wouldn't Benny be like, the stairs are over there? Are PG-13 <laughs> movies more harmful to young people than R-rated movies? Be, uh, because they don't show the repercussions of violence, where a kid sees something violent, and like, you know, I again, Justin Silverman and I, and you yeah. saw movies like RoboCop way too young, but I was like, well, I it's cool, but I don't ever want to shoot anybody because yeah. people die, and it's That's scary. Thinking, like, I, I've seen Alien on, like, AMC when yeah. I was, like, a child mm-hmm. and stuff like that, so, like, yeah. hmm. That was not too violent, though. 
chest burst. Yeah, other than that scene and like a couple of the hole punch in the yeah. head, it's not super Sigourney violent. Sigourney Weaver. It's not Robocop violent Sigourney or Sigourney Weaver violent. in teeny tiny underwear. Yes. Like, how does that underwear stay? But no, PG-13 movies have way more like <laughs> gun violence <laughs> and like explosions. And pe- like the Marvel movies, people are getting murdered left yeah. and right, but they don't show blood. So it's like, oh, it's fine. It's mm-hmm. like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> they kill a lot of people, but let's be mad at Ben Affleck because he kills people as Batman. And then the new, the new, they bring. The, the, the difference is Batman has a very famous moral code. We're okay. not talking about Batman. Wait, no, no, hold on. No, wait, no, wait, wait, that's wait. a goddamn The first shot that they brought, it's like Michael Keaton's back as the Flash, or back as Batman for the Flash movie, and the first image they show is a bloody bat symbol. It's like, you all motherfuckers were mad because Ben Affleck's Batman killed some dudes because he was broken. Michael Keaton is like, we're going to revel in it. He burned how, a clown alive. How do you not know... Maybe Michael Keaton is dying and that was blood coming out of his nose. Because they're probably going to... We got to get back to the mummy, all right? probably going to be the... You're not derailing okay. another All episode right. with I'm Batman stuff. I'm just saying. Oh, like you do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in The Dark Knight Rises. <sighs> I am in The Dark Knight Rises. He keeps signing them, and I wa- I keep tagging Warner Brothers in the retweets because I want them to put a stop to this. <laughs> I'm going to you with that now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they go back to Cairo, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love this is when we first meet Winston, the British uh, yeah. royal He Aeroport. walks through the fountain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's just a drink. He's like, oh, it's wet there. I love his, I love his backstory where like he fought in the... The, like one of the wars or whatever, mm-hmm. but then like all his friends died, and he's just sad he didn't get to join in. Yeah. So he's just like, well, I'm still here. I hope I get to die one day. I'm just sitting out here in the middle of nowhere with my record player. Yeah, like. and he's like, I'm a drunk, yeah. and he just steals the guy's beer. I thought that character was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Benny brings Imhotep to the poor American who lost yeah. his eye. He's like, oh yeah, the prince of whatever wants to meet you, and he's like, thank you, sir. And I do like the mummy's like weird mask. He's got like a, yeah, Stargate. Man, a little bit like yeah. the man in the iron mask as well, the mm-hmm. last one that they did. Yeah, and it, it was funny when he takes the mask off with CGI. Yeah. <laughs> you see the beetle crawling yeah, across? Yeah, the beetles crawling around him. Uh, he kills that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, They're drinking at the bar. And the water turns to blood. Yep. Yes. Which is and another plague. So that's two plagues so far, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's water and alcohol. Is there not? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everything turns to blood. You need to do like me. If you know you're wrong, just keep going. Yeah. Just keep digging the hole. And then, and then fire rains from the sky. Mm-hmm. Seems a little much, Emotep. You might want to wait a little bit yeah. before you do the fire rating from the sky. Also might want to use that one a little mm-hmm. bit more. I think it might help you out in the future. <laughs> I don't think he's controlling it. I think it's just happening. Oh. Well, because he's definitely controlling yeah. the sand cloud later because when she kisses him, she breaks it. Well, that's when he's at his full power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think th- that's just happening as like a warning mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the mummy is like attacking like Evelyn and whatnot. But a cat scares him, which is yeah. great. Also, I do like the scene where he's like walking and getting shot. Mm. And, well, like, I, I like when he goes through the uh, peephole. That's a little or, bit or later. The, oh, that's yeah, a that little bit later. later. It's a little bit later. That's later. But yeah, the cat like jumps on the piano and he's like, "No, I'm out!" And they're like, "What the hell was that about?" And they're like, "Yeah, mummies don't like cats because mm-hmm. yeah. they're guardians of the underworld." Of the underworld. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lords of the underworld. <laughs> Darkness fills our heart with pain. Remember that episode? Is that South Park? South Park. Yeah, with- yeah. Tim Eric! Yeah. What was the other one? <laughs> so yeah, we find out, big shock, uh, Eric Davari is a uh, uh, magi. Yes. Evelyn's boss is a magi. Mm-hmm. He was in it from the beginning, and that's why he burnt the thing. Yep. Uh, they figure out, like, uh, Imhotep has picked Evelyn to be his new bride. Surrogate. Everyone's upset about that. <laughs> like you do. Uh, and also the mummy uh, just causes an eclipse. Which I, I don't know, being able to move the moon unnaturally I think would like destroy the world. Mm-hmm. So that's a pretty big one. Do, Whatever. Do, do you have a defense for that one? Shut up, Tony. <laughs> all tides are fucked up. Think Women's of... periods are unsinking. It's all crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I think they're looking for the key. Benny is just like uh, being confronted by uh, O'Connell. Mm-hmm. And I just like he's beating the shit out of him. I like when he tries to run away and he just picks up the chair and like throws <laughs> it at him. Uh, but he, ba- he uh, what you call it? The snobby British guy gets killed. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that gives Benny a reason to jump out. And there's a nice Texas switch. You know what a Texas switch is? What, Tony? It's when a stuntman like, goes past something and it cuts to the regular actor. Yep. So the stuntman jumps out of the window, falls out of frame, and then Benny, the actor, yep. comes up. He just up. sits up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called a Texas the switch. And he's Texas doing like, the whole... The, like... <laughs> Look up Texas switches in movie. They're pretty fun. So the mummy was stalking the dude by himself. And then when he kills him, suddenly there's a million people around him. Mm-hmm. They're like, huh, look at that. 
mummy just eating that guy from Titanic. Yeah, like that's what the, they said. Yeah, the dude like yells and everybody's like crowding around for yeah. some reason. And the mummy, the mummy looks really. But you know what? Here. I can't say anything about these people because they're just as stupid as the people who run towards all the monsters in every yeah. Godzilla. In Godzilla, they're always running toward the and monsters. He says mummy, and he goes, "No, daddy." <laughs> <laughs> the the mummy looks the creepiest here. Yes, where he's pale and he mm-hmm. still has holes. Because he, he's like somewhat together, but he's like not. Yeah, yeah. and I like uh, he just vomits up all the flies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the then the flies start attacking all the people too. Yeah, flies, mm-hmm. but not Benji. Benji, the dog. <laughs> the Benji, the dog was in this. Uh, so then the mummy kills the uh, other American guy mm-hmm. on his way to Evelyn. He's trying to get to Evelyn, and he's almost back. He's got like oh, a hole in his mouth. Hold on, didn't um, what was it? The, it was the two dudes were gonna stay together, and the one and then the guy was like, drink. "Oh, I want to go get like, yeah, I want to go yeah. get more alcohol." And I do like uh, the mummy comes in, and it's just sand, and just dehydrates the guy right yeah, away. It's like use that cool. power all, all the, time. the time. Stop going to the Batman school of yeah. power uses. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just, use this once and toss it. Just turn into sand and dehydrate people. <laughs> yeah. That's like your most effective thing. I can't believe you haven't done that more. He's like the reverse of uh, fucking Amber Heard in Justice League, <laughs> where she could like pull the moisture yeah. out of people. In the Snyder, in Snyder cut. Uh, um, she, no, she doesn't. In the movie jo- Aquaman, Aquaman as well. Yeah. yeah. In Aquaman? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember her doing that. She like takes it from uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Thing, right? Oh, oh no, she but turns... I mean like when she's like ripping yeah. like, oh. the guy. Oh, remember when part. she turns all the wine into like daggers? That scene was kind of fucking cool. We don't talk about Amber Heard. I know. Hashtag justice for Johnny. I know. Anyway, uh, this is the scene you're talking about where the mummy yeah. turns into actual sand coming mm-hmm. through the, the little, little hole. Which realistically, he probably could just blown that door up. Yeah. <laughs> we went under it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, he's all like, man, I can't wait to have a girlfriend again. And then I feel bad for Arnold Vazlo because I don't know if they told him this, but like he like makes out with her and then he loses more of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and also right before this, he like chews a beetle. What's yeah. cool when it crawls, yeah, it crawls out of his neck into it. his mouth. Mm-hmm. So does he have just beetles living in him? It's a little weird. Hey, what's out? I here? think it's just residual yeah. from them literally living. Yeah, but like, you would think they like want to keep his mouth so they have less effects to do, and they're like, nah, fuck it, get rid of his mouth. He's gonna have a monster mouth for most of the movie. I think it's because he started looking too human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like, no, they're we like, gotta not fix yet. that. Not yeah. yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, O'Connell comes in. He's like, look what I got. It's like a cat. <laughs> the cat. <laughs> the cat hisses. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> that cat trick's not gonna work for long, though. Because eventually he'll be yeah, too once powerful. he's fully reincarnated, mm-hmm. then yeah. And then I believe he is... cat trick is if you score three goals in uh, cat league hockey. Hmm. So. I used to, so I played for a hockey team once called Hat Trick Swayze, and our logo was Patrick Swayze, but with the two sticks like the Mighty Ducks. That's logo. pretty funny. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so okay, explain this one to me, genius. Mm-hmm. <sighs> What does a woman know? I'm actually wearing the same fez as the snobby guy when he said that line, because he also <laughs> wore a fez. Anyway, so I get the plague, the boils, and I, I get that. So the people have boils and stuff on them, but then why are they also brainwashed? Emotep. Emotep. I do love that Jonathan. Jonathan like he just he just pretends to be one of them yeah. and they just go along with like it. Like in Shaun of the Dead, where they pretend to be zombies yeah. and go yeah. along with them. <laughs> I listened to the uh, commentary track for this a million years ago. Yeah. They're pretty funny, both movies, because uh, the directors will point out like their mistakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the uh, guys with like the boils, his eyes are just pure white. And apparently it's because the extra they had like wouldn't stop looking into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but his face looked so cool. So mm-hmm. they're like, we're just going to block out his eyes. That's really yeah. funny. <laughs> it would have uh, been cool if they all had blacked out, like all white out yeah. eyes because they would be possessed. Yeah, that would have. Uh, back then would have been too much yeah. to do. They just did it for the one guy. Uh, but then back we get an. Ex- then it was 1999. Like, yeah, was, relax. They had to focus on the sand wall. It's almost 2000. Zero, zero, body. Oh, man. Oh, Are you done? <laughs> We're going to party like it's 1999. And Warner Music just sued us. No, it's okay. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> It's he's not singing Prince. He's singing the artist formerly known. As exactly Prince. the symbol. The guy who played Prince's dad in oh my God. Uh, Purple Rain. He just died. He just died. He was yeah. also from Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Hood, and yeah, uh, a couple episodes of Millennium, I think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, we get an exciting car chase yes. through the streets of Cairo. And again, this also feels like Indiana this, Jones. No, it's uh, before uh, they're looking in the museum, trying to figure out uh, where the Golden Book is. Yeah, they figured out. And, and they, then it switches. Yeah, and then they, they get in the car. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, sure. And then the well, Jonathan does the emotep thing or whatever to get into the car, yes, yes. and then the car. Then they happens. all take off, and uh, unfortunately, the last American falls off the back of the car, and they mm-hmm. just leave him, even though they probably should go back for him. They're just running dudes over, but again, oh yeah, wait, that's mean because they know that they're just brainwashed. Yeah. And Brendan, they, they stop, and they're like, what are we going to do? And Brendan Fraser's like, well, obviously murder all of them. It's like, wow, that's really <laughs> It mean. goes back to the South Park, the zombie episode, where the, where the lady from the Worcestershire sauce is like, well, don't just start killing them willy-nilly. We can return them normal after they're cutting them all out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, the mummy absorbs him. It's finally back to his full form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, like, confronts uh, Evie and them. And yeah, what, they're literally surrounded. Yeah, what's, like, the trade-off that they do? Um... Like they'll live if the, like, the mummy Evie will goes s- with them. The mummy yeah. will spare them if Evie goes with them, and she's like, "Yeah, I'll go with him. That'll get you time to go there first mm-hmm. and then and w- find w- the gold w- book." What was the one thing? It was like um, uh, he, Benny was talking to Evie through Emotep, saying that like, "Oh, like yeah, I'll be with you for like, or we'll be together yeah. forever." And then she's like, "For all eternity, you idiot!" Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <It> was like <laughs> Egyptians, man. <laughs> To be fair, though, he knows a lot of languages, okay? (laughs) Uh, But yeah, he, like, immediately lies. He's like, kill them, but they get away in, Mm. like, the sewer and whatnot. And I think the next day, they go to Winston. Oh, wait, who, uh, uh, the the dude dies? Oh, Eric Tavari uh, kills himself. Or well, art. he doesn't kill himself, but he stays there to like, give them time. Yeah, because yeah, he's like a swordsman, mm-hmm. and he like sword fights everyone. And he's like, "Go, oh, I'll protect you." Uh, then they go to meet Winston, and they're like, "Hey, there's a really cool mission. You're probably gonna die." And he's like, yeah. "I'm in. Mm-hmm. Let's go." And they're like, <laughs> yep. oh, "Okay." He's like Tignataro from Army of the Dead, exactly. Only in a good movie. <laughs> yeah. No, I really like this character. I like the actor who played him. He has that very lived-in kind of feel to him. Yeah, you know? and uh, I like how uh, Jonathan's on the wing and he's freaking out. Then Ardith is like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> and they see a big, uh, they see a twister mm-hmm. in the desert. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh my God, have you ever seen that? It's like, yeah, twister came out a few years ago. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's right there, twister. No, doesn't he say something like, oh, I haven't seen one that big? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I get right. that a lot. <laughs> Not according to John Brakes bad news. Uh, yeah, so this this part confused me. The mummy throws uh, Benny and Evie out of the tornado. Mm-hmm. So were they just in the tornado? I think yeah. so. Or did he like turn them into sand also? No, I'm pretty sure they were just in the tornado. They were just ra- you ever put your shoes in the dryer and they just <laughs> rattle around <laughs> and make say, terrible like, sounds? How do they not just like throw up like as soon as they get out of that thing? Sorry. I mean, like her hair is a mess and everything, so I'm assuming yeah. that like, yeah, they she were up in there. Beautiful hair too yeah. in this movie. Right, the yeah. volume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the mummy like turns human, and then he notices the plane. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Oh, don't worry, I got this sand wall. I got the only thing you guys will remember about this movie. <laughs> Face. I and remember sand. a lot about this movie, I but remember, this yeah. this was this was so iconic. They even put it in the Tom Cruise one. Yeah, they, like, they couldn't not. do it. I mean, it. they reuse it in the second movie mm-hmm. too. But well, it's, it's water. water. It's water yeah. that time. I remember the second one. I don't think Jet Li got any version of that. He turned no. into King Ghidorah. Oh, we got some stupid Yeti that looks like a plushie. I remember the Yetis. I remember liking the Yetis. All I remember is Jet Li turned into King Ghidorah in that movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the big sand wall. And again, this one is aged a little bit, but seeing it in the theaters in 1999, it was yeah. fucking awesome. And it was a fun, again, another fun set piece that worked And I like well. that they shoot it. Like, what do you... What are you gonna do? Why are you shooting it? And he's like laughing too. Like, yeah, what, like, are, the, yeah, okay. what are those gonna do? I'm gonna shoot those grains of sand. I'm like, this is a trillion grains of sand. Uh, it's really funny too, because they're like standing on a little hill, uh, Benny, Evie, yeah. uh, emo type or whatever. And like the wall's just kind of just going in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> like around them. Yeah. So he crashes the plane. <laughs> I love Benny's line. Well, he's uh, like, Evie, he's like, Evie kisses him. Oh, Evie it's, kisses yeah, and distracts he's, he's like meditating or whatever to control yeah. the... But he thinks the plane is destroyed because yeah. it goes down. I love Benny. He goes... I love the whole sand wall trick. It was beautiful. He's a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Winston dies. Winston does die. Dies smiling. Yes. He's yeah. real he thrilled about it. it. And he got sucked down into, into quicksand. Into quicksand, yeah. which apparently isn't that big of a deal. Quicksand was in his Jungle Book movie also. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what? Pull the cover of a Jungle Book. I always thought that was Liu Kang. Oh, no. It, yeah, yeah. It's not. But. I always remember that movie. Be, uh, Liu Kang is in it. And then mm-hmm. I watch it. I'm like, oh, that's not Liu Kang the at all. dude who played uh, Bruce Lee in Dragon. Oh, it is? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Also, what's her face is in it? Uh, Lena Headley, I think. 
Yeah? Really? Yeah, from Dread and 300. Yeah, Jason Scott Lee, Carrie Ells, Lena Headey. Yep. Uh, Sam Neill, John Cleese. Wow. Huh. I'm going to watch this. I remember liking it. I think they made it more Tarzan than Jungle Book. But yeah. anyway. Remember the last Tarzan movie that came out with Margot Robbie? Oh, I didn't my God. See I forgot that existed. Exactly, right? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know why they keep doing King Arthur and Tarzan. It's public like public domain. They're public domain, but like they have to realize like modern audiences don't really And you really care. can't do the Tarzan story anymore in the culture that we're in. The problem is they've been done to death. Yeah. You have so many options when it comes to like Robin Hood and all that mm. stuff that it's like, all right, well, there's not really much you could do because then if you try to do anything cool, then it's too different. Yeah. It's like it's just let's chill. We don't need we Zach's, don't need a King Arthur. Zack Snyder was talking about doing an Excalibur one that takes place in the Old West. See, that's weird. Don't yeah. do it. No one's going to watch yeah. it. <laughs> I love John Borman's Excalibur. You ever see that one that's before? That's a good one. That's, that's a good, a good one. one. Uh, yes. Sexy ass Helen Mirren. So they're uh, they're at Hamanoptra. Mm -hmm. They're like trying to dig into like the hidden chamber or whatever. And uh, Jonathan gets attacked by a beetle. They should open a restaurant that's called Hamanoptra. <laughs> <laughs> also, Jonathan's an, ass Studios. <laughs> Jonathan's an asshole because they're digging and he's like, come on, put your packs into it. And they're like, what What are you doing? He's yeah. like, never mind. Never mind. I'm supervising. Yeah, then he he's, goes and picks it's, the beetle off. It's yeah. the old Justin Silverman. Yeah. The old yeah. supervising Justin Silverman. Yeah. So they cut the beetle out of him, mm. which is pretty gross. Uh, then they shoot it. They shoot yeah. it, that's right, and it alerts the mummy. And the mummy's like, well, I gotta bring back my mummy friends. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they were just there? They're in the walls? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which was weird. I mean... It's a cool reveal, it's... like, they just come out of the wall, mm -hmm. and they're, like, they're half stone. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, go wake the others. And it's, <sighs> I don't remember him having that many priests when they were alive, but suddenly when they turn into mummies, there's, like, 10,000 exactly. <laughs> priests. Yeah. There's a different set of mummies I later that are probably, explained. like... Just kind of collected whatever mummies were in there too, yeah. just cause. Because remember, the guys, it's the City of the Dead. That's true. The guys that's in true. the actual mummy. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. I'll give you that. The guys in the actual mummy suits look great. Yeah, I'm like, but there is, is a very. So this is that era of CGI, and the Spider-Man movies were guilty mm -hmm. of this. The X-Men movie. The X-Men where it's like, wow, this is an awesome fight on the Statue of Liberty. And then it turns into CGI Wolverine. You're like, oh, yeah, they had a hard time, like in the same shots, transitioning between live There's action no, and CGI. There was no weight to it. They can do it well these days. But I think because that was such an issue back then, mm. Hollywood was like, well, just make it all CGI. And it's like, yep. well, no, why don't we work a little bit better? But they were still doing it in 2003 because even Daredevil, the Ben Affleck Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. Daredevil and Catwoman, bad. Catwoman were really too. bad at that. Catwoman just looks like cutscenes from PlayStation. Yeah, but now it's not Ugh, like, too, like I know Spider-Man is digital now, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel no, like again, because as it feels like there's weight. It feels like there's Th their their bodies are moving as they're like being yeah. jerked up to things, you know. You know what movie? Everyone hated the movie. I liked it, but the last Jurassic Park that did a good job of blending live action and CGI. I didn't see it. Th they they had like live action stuff mm. on set, and then even if they replaced it digitally because they had a live action one on set, the yeah. lighting match, it, like it was almost seamless. I skipped Jurassic World as well. I only saw bits and pieces. They're okay. Yeah. They're okay. They're Jurassic World. Nothing but CGI except for one scene. Yeah. Terrible. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, effects wise, mm -hmm. like they were like, all right, let's not make it all digital. Let's like actually build a live action T Rex. And like, it, it, we no longer have that problem, but Hollywood's afraid to use live action yeah. stuff now. They went all in on the CGI, even though the CGI looked worse. But the guys in the actual mummy suits, when they, they were guys great. in mummy suits, look great. They look great. I really like those. Oh, they find the gold room full of treasure. Yes. And he's really happy about mm -hmm. that, Jonathan. No, they, do, like, they do the, uh, the light trick again, but. <laughs> right, just shoot yeah, just shoot it. Just shoots the yeah. light. <laughs> so they're fighting mummies, and Ardeth uh, sacrifices himself mm -hmm. very bravely. He's yes. very noble, of course. <laughs> uh, but I like how like Ren and Fraser doesn't throw the dynamite at him. He kind of throws it like, all right, well I'll throw it at, like in the front of the hallway, so maybe he'll get out. Yeah. <laughs> and I do like the two mummies are just like, ah, and they just get, like. <laughs> <blown up. laughs> Oh, yeah. And then when he's fighting the mummies around Evelyn, it just feels very Evil Dead. It feels very Evil Dead. Even like when like the, the hand, hand is, is coming and then like at he, one point he stabs a mummy on accident mm -hmm. and like cuts its head off. He cuts the one's head off that juggles its own head yeah. and then he hits it like a baseball into the screen. I can see Sam Raimi looking at this going, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. They couldn't wait a couple more years for this technology. I could have used that in Army of Darkness. <laughs> 
So uh, while they're interrupting the whole ceremony, I think at this point he puts the spirit into the mummy girl. Mm. Yeah. So it's now in her body, but then he's going to kill Evelyn and it's going to switch over. Yeah. But they interrupt it, obviously, with all the fighting. So then the mummy's like, uh, no, 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 it's not the mummy. They find the gold book. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they're reading the gold book and they wake up the mummified magi. Mm hmm. And uh, they... they they're like soldiers. Yeah, what you yeah. call it? Jonathan can't, like, read Egyptian well, so he didn't finish the spell, so mm -hmm. they're just trying to kill everyone. Yeah. Uh, and I do like that they just came out of a room, like, they all just died standing up, because yeah. I think that was a... I see it in movies, I don't know if it's real, but, like, like Egyptians would be like, all right, well, I need my guards to be in the tomb with me and die with me so mm -hmm. they can protect me in the afterlife. It's like, man, that had to suck. That is, like, when you ever see the movies, they're all just like still frozen. Like realistically, they would have like no, just been like hanging out, yeah. or they would have been murdering mm -hmm. each other. <laughs> Was it, does the third one had like the terracotta warriors in it? Didn't yes, it? Okay, yeah, it had yeah. the terracotta warriors. Uh, but yeah, these mummies are pretty awesome too, and they can climb walls like yeah. spiders and mm -hmm. stuff. And <laughs> jump, they do a lot of jumping. They over do a things. lot of jumping and stuff, and they were so popular, they brought them back for the second yes, one. They did. <laughs> Jonathan, finally, with Evelyn's help, they figure out how to uh, control the soldiers. Mm -hmm. What was it, a metaphys? Was yeah, something like, a yeah. metaphys. Uh, and then the soldiers are like, well, we got to kill the first woman we see. Uh, well, so no, 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 no. Jonathan says, I know, I kill know, I know, an ox I know. Yeah. Get I know. the heck out of here. Uh, I, I forgot, they did, they did that classic uh, action movie cliche where the girl has to fight an evil girl. Yes. So yeah. it's yeah. like Evelyn yep. versus the mummy lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's like she looks pretty creepy. She's being like choked by an ox on the moon or whatever. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm mad <laughs> By the way, I keep saying mummy. I know her name's Anox and the Moon, but I didn't feel like typing that mm. out. So I'm like, mummy lady. Oh my God. But yeah, the soldiers just kill her and then they go somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I like when they're fighting uh, the mummy. They cut off his arm. Well, and, Jonathan, which is a little bit gory, not yeah, super gory. Bit. He's like going after Jonathan because yeah. Jonathan ordered the things to yeah. kill Noxon. Mm -hmm. And O'Connell cuts his arm uh, yeah. off. But I like in the next shot, he's just going like yeah. this. Yeah. Like, oh, you just twist that baby <laughs> right back on. Why isn't the mummy just turning to sand and dehydrating them? Yeah. What? Why doesn't he just always turn to sand? I have that problem with Martian Manhunter. Whenever he's fighting someone, like just phase yeah. the entire time. You have no need to have a physical but form. But maybe they're like the Punisher or the Predator, not the Punisher. The predator, <laughs> they like the sport of it, you know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, they uh, use the gold book, and they summon someone to come down in the chariot. It looked like the Pharaoh, but I don't think it is. No, no, I think it's just something from the underworld. Yeah, and it's it's not a good effect. No, but the CGI chariot comes down, and then it it pulls the mummy's soul out. And the mummy's like, no! And the other mummy's well, like, no, pulls, also no! Yeah. Pulls, like, the curse out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, I thought you said it was going to kill him. And then they stab him. And he's like, he's mortal now. Was it that like, it's a sensor ghost because it pulls the curse out? <laughs> <laughs> remember... Remember uh, WWF you had to, you don't have to laugh at that. I, I'm embarrassed about. Remember, that. remember WWF had the right to censor group. Do you remember that group? Yeah. So right to censor. Uh, there were there was a wrestler called Val Venus. He was a porn star wrestler. Nice. He's he's very controversial on Twitter these days. Mm -hmm. Then there was the Godfather, who was a pimp. I wrestler. remember the Godfather. But then there was a group called Right to Censor, where they got brainwashed, and then they suddenly started dressing nice, and they would try to censor all the naughty things on Monday Night Raw. It was a, <laughs> it, a lot of people hate it, and mm. I agree, like it wasn't gonna last long, but it was funny for a couple weeks. I like they're called the Right to Censor though, because people would write to the censor. Yeah, that they, that's good. <laughs> it was oh clever. I like that. It was clever. Anyway, stabs him, says he's mortal. And yeah, he's holding his little boo boo, and he's. Back yeah, up. a boo boo. Yeah. Oh, my mummy boo boo. Oh, my boo boo. Oh. <laughs> I want my mummy. All right, backing up I into the pool. When we were filming here last with Crystal, I said, oh, well, we're going to move those, but I put little feetsies on the bottom of them. <laughs> she would not stop making fun of me for the rest of the night for saying yeah. feetsies. And then Justin was like, who the fuck do you think you are? I say feetsies all yeah, the time. I say and feetsies I was, too. Yeah. You guys are idiots. You're an idiot. Um, anyway, you're yeah. A fist. So, yeah, he goes into the little pool thing that the souls come out of or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, and he turns back. Bunch into, of uh, yeah, he's turning back into like his actual mummy form, and it's actually kind of cool. They have like all little like faces. The faces and stuff in the water. Yeah. And yeah. then again, he says death is only the beginning, and then just falls. Yeah. Into the yeah. Thing. And then a couple years later, like Lord of the Rings two had that uh, 
pond with mm-hmm. skulls and stuff in it. I'm like, man, that looks way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the whole time this is happening, Benny has been stealing gold. Yep. And like taking it and putting it on a camel and then going back. Mm-hmm. And Benny screws up. Yep. He puts his big pile of gold on like a lever that just starts it reminds, sinking. It reminded me of 13 Ghosts where we're like, oh, you yeah. didn't pay oh, attention. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. Because this is an action adventure movie set in like the past, uh, the, the place needs to get blown up at the end. Mm-hmm. It just always has to happen. Yeah. But, uh, I want to talk about how it's blowing up at some point. But yeah, so they're all trying to escape. Uh, they managed to outbeat Benny to the end. And like O'Connell was actually going to help Benny. Yeah. Yep. Because O'Connell recognizes a great man when he sees it. Yeah. Anyway, and then he's, he's like extending <laughs> his soon, arm, and then it yeah. closes, and he's like, "Well, goodbye, as soon Benny." As Benny's like, Benny. "All right, goodbye, Benny." Like he's not really. He's like, "I'm not too broken up about and then it." Benny's left with all the treasure. Yes. Again, like, but the, then don't the Beatles come after the Beatles him? Right? Come after yeah. him. And they're like, "We're going to get well, you, Benny." Well, it's not until <laughs> we're going to get not, you, Benny. It, it's uh, <laughs> the stuff's lowering, and like um, the mirrors, like, are, like yeah, they over, like get destroyed, and then it's like completely dark. So then he, what was it? He has like a torch or something. Mm-hmm. What does yeah. he have? Yeah. I forget what he has, but he has, yeah, anyway, he has it's fire, yeah. and uh, then the beetles start like literally surrounding him. Yeah, that he's morning, like trying to keep him away with the fire. I love how they're still alive in the second one because mm-hmm. <laughs> they come out of the ground. Well, but, in in that one, he, he woke up, got out of bed, drived the scarab across his head. Anyway, so let's beetles. talk about this. Then the how, light, then so, the light goes out, and then he's yeah. eaten alive. So. So I imagine it was a device built by man to destroy the place. Yes. Okay. What what exactly, what were the mechanics involved to have just giant stone plates like crumbling and falling? Like I what the fuck was that? I think it's just because it wasn't very steady because it's old and it was sinking. But like a, like a part of the fucking earth's crust like shoots out mm-hmm. of the ground and then falls back down. Don't worry about it. I thought about that even again, going back to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Who like kind of the Crystal Skull? It was at least aliens. But I mean, but I'm, but yeah, but the at least the people who <laughs> built the tomb and stuff. It's like who's there like maintaining that to make sure that the booby traps work when it's time for people to show up and try to. Yeah, loot realistically, it. like Indiana Jones and stuff would be like, oh no, don't wa- watch out for that. It's like what are you talking about? Like it's been <laughs> broken for well, years. Those those darts are going to shoot out. It's like termites ate those darts like yeah, a million they're, years they're ago. Way gone. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Ardeth survived. And I like the fake out where they had the wrappings on his yeah, hand so you think it's him. a mummy. Yeah, I yep. thought that was pretty good. I also noticed as the movie went on that Ardeth looks exactly like my friend Mike from Tucson. Oh, who yeah. runs Tucson Comic Con. I was like, damn, that dude looks exactly like Mike. <laughs> and then Mike they, uh, watches the show. He he uh Hi Mike. I want to yeah. see a picture of him. I will show you a picture. Uh, of him. Are you rethinking? Ardeth bet, yeah. You, you re- rethinking your yeah. engagement? I, I promise. Fair? Me and my fiance aren't that serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like Odette Fair, you're gonna love Resident Evil Apocalypse and Resident oh, Evil. Yeah, he was oh, in that. Oh, my God. oh no! <laughs> but he doesn't have his awesome long hair, so it's like Samson. They cut it and lost. Yeah, his power. yeah. Anyway, uh, they ride off into the sunset, and little did they know they have all of Benji's gold. Exactly. Ben, Benny. Now you got me saying Benji. <laughs> Benny's gold. He's got all of Benny's gold. Benji the Hunted. And it ends. The music swells by James Newton Howard, I mm-hmm. believe. Right? Yeah. No. I think it's James Newton Howard. Uh, I just agree with you most times. Can you tell? Can you check and see if it's James Newton Howard or James Horner? I forget which one it is. I think it's James Newton Howard. So the movie ends and uh, leaves you with a feel-good mood. I love this movie. I still really enjoy it. Sure, it's not a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Although the original Mummy wasn't very horror-filled. It was more of like a tragic There's love story. There's some kind of creepy yeah, stuff one of my in this favorite, Yeah, one of my favorite scenes is the first time the Mummy like walks and the guy who was in the thing with him goes insane and is just yeah. laughing. I love that scene, you know? Yeah, but the original Mummy, I like how this movie was like, okay... The original mummy wasn't a guy in wrappings. Mm-hmm. That didn't come till later. But the movie tries to please both. They're like, so the main mummy's not going to be that. But, but we will have some mummies that yeah. look like how mm-hmm. you're supposed to think. So it scratches that itch. And yeah, I think it was a really, really great time. I enjoy the sequel to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not as good, but I still really enjoy it. Yeah. There's a lot of things where you're like, eh, I guess you can do that. Again, yeah, it was a backdoor pilot, basically, for the, for the rock Scorpion movie. King, yeah. which I... Oh. Again, I have all five Scorpion Kings. They were making them up until like also, two or three years ago. The Rock as the Scorpion King at the very end of the Mummy Returns. Oh, it's awful it's CGI. Oh, awful. yeah. Yeah, we should get to but, that. But hold on. Um, I wanted to say my theory uh, when we were talking about the jars. Oh, yeah. The one. So they're all um, an Ox and a Moon's like organs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that's not emotops. I saw your notes. Oh, you wrote yeah, I didn't it's, realize it's, that. Yeah, it's yeah. her. 
so the one jar that's broken is her heart one. Oh. And since the second movie actually exists in canon, I like to think that like technically her heart was missing, and that's why she didn't want Emotep, and that's why she oh. left him at the end. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I was like, Steve, hmm. Steve Summers is watching right now, and he's like, "Yeah, let's go with that." He's like, like I "Break that down some more." I haven't made a movie <laughs> since 2013. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it led to like a big legacy sequels arrived at Universal, yeah, right. which I was real. I think we talked about it before. I was real upset they got rid of the King Kong ride, and then I went on the Mummy ride. I'm like, I can't believe they got rid of King Kong, and then three seconds in, I'm like, this ride's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, what was it? My nephew was there for his birthday, and I told my sister and her boyfriend take him on that ride mm -hmm. and in the queue he's sobbing are there zombies on this i'm, I'm like, sorry no, i'm sorry mummies. i'm sorry the queue yeah you freaking british like what what the hell's going on here Unless we say lines in america That's what they call it you call idiot queue, yeah. yeah we call them lines anyway <laughs> so uh he gets on the ride sobbing <laughs> So I scarred for, for, he for life, the ride. but <laughs> that reminds me of me as a kid when I went to Disney and I was like, I got to go on Alien Encounter because I saw a commercial for it. I'm like, I need to do Alien Encounter. Yeah, it looks so cool. And so it was the first thing we did. And then I got too scared to do anything else. <laughs> really? That yeah. ride Dude, that thing was awesome. terrifying. It yeah. was awesome, but it scared the shit they out of me. They turned into a Lilo and Stitch yeah, ride. But now they? it doesn't even exist. My brother was exist. terrified of the great movie ride because of Alien. Alien. Yeah. yeah he was scared to shit. So on that. I think what we can all agree is. The legacy this left was that a young Tony really fell in love with mummies. Mm -hmm. And then he got older and he's like, I'm going to do my own mummy one day. And then he made Mummy Cop the series. He did two seasons of it. So anyway. And no I one watched it. And he lost a lot of money making it. Mm -hmm. But now people are watching it. And they want a season three. But like, people have moved on. Yeah. People are older. The Mummy Cop mask isn't doing well. But he will be in a movie coming soon. Mm -hmm. If Mark Magner finishes yeah. Daisy Durkin's four or whatever it is. A couple years ago, I was told to write a screenplay making fun of Swamp Zombies called River Mummies. And I wrote it. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's got a great poster. We'll put it somewhere in the trailer we shot. Put it over. <laughs> we're, not, we're not putting that there. Yeah. Put it right here. Mummies uh, are underserved, though. But I wish they didn't just do Egyptian mummies. I'd like to see. Yeah, so which I was, tried. Yeah. I was going to say, um, the third this could have been anything. Yeah. Like, while I do like The Mummy Returns and everything, I wish it kind of just kind of went into like vampires and stuff too. I want to see the Aztec they could have, mummies. They could have Aztec literally mummies, made this. Bog mummies. You ever see those people who like they pull their bodies mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, tar, leather. Yeah. yeah. But they literally could have made this into a thing where like instead of Van Helsing existing, they could have made this into all the universal yeah. monsters that they wanted to do. Yeah. Because that would have worked. Could you mm -hmm. imagine him shooting with the pistols like down uh, that vampires been cool. and stuff? It's weird they didn't like try to like oh, work up man. to like a Van Helsing yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Like or have him in Van Helsing, I guess instead, maybe Instead they had Tom Cruise not Tom Cruise, in Hugh the, Jackman. No, in oh, the in Mummy, the remake, you mean? And yeah. they tried to do a cinematic universe, but it was like, oh, well, this is mostly uh, uh, fucking American Werewolf in London. Yeah, I did like the Knights Templar mummies at the end. Yeah, it reminded me of Tomb of the Blind Dead. I think I did the math when Tom Cruise is fighting uh, Russell Crowe. Mm -hmm. Uh, Russell Crowe says, you're a younger man. And I think I did the math. Tom Cruise is either two years younger or older than yeah. Russell Crowe. But he's aging a lot better. Did I see The Mummy with you? I saw The Mummy with James. You didn't see it with me. I didn't see it no, with you? No, Because I saw it around here. Okay. Remember but that yeah. tweet? And they're like, welcome to the new dark uh, universe. The dark it universe. Was. And I'm just like... <laughs> and it was going to be Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. Yeah. Javier Bardem as the Frankenstein monster. Angelina Jolie as, and then Gal Gadot as the Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. It was supposed to be directed by uh, Bill Condon, who yeah. did Chicago. But then they didn't. But then they didn't. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I did like the, I like the Invisible Man reboot, though. I, I didn't see that one. Yeah, I thought they did With, a good uh, job. Was it Elizabeth yeah, Moss? Moss, Moss. Yeah. yeah. I I actually, it's actually really good. I didn't yeah. see it yet. Um, Again, that's no the really. Ryan and I were seeing the night that the world shut down. Yeah. So Ryan and I were at the movies and they shut the movie off and told everyone they had to leave. And Ryan oh and I God. were like, oh, okay. You want a good uh, mummy movie besides the original? Uh, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, yes. has a really good mummy Julianne short with Moore uh, yeah, Julian Moore, Steve, Steve Buscemi. Buscemi. It's really good. The mummy in that is fucking awesome. But yeah. Monster uh, Squad has a great mummy Monster in it. Monster Squad has an awesome uh, mummy. Uh, wax, I fucking love the mummy Waxwork in Waxwork has a great mummy yeah. in it, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of good mummy stuff. Yeah. They don't get a lot of, like, mainstream appeal mm -hmm. outside of this series. Maybe yeah. one day I can make my River Mummy script. Maybe it's a lot of fun. one day. But yeah. yeah, so this has been The Mummy, and we gotta go now. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast <laughs> yeah, wow. version of this, <laughs> like what? Yeah. Uh, YouTube version, 
Sorry, you don't get this, but exclusive to the podcast version, uh, we're doing voicemails now. Yes. Uh, where we've been getting your voicemail. So call our phone number here. <laughs> leave us a voicemail. Make it like a flashing thing. Like- yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, speaking of podcasts, please download the show on a podcast feed. If you don't have time to watch it, you know, just play it in the background. Listen to our lovely voices. Uh, and, you know, Patreon. We got that short film coming out mm-hmm. soon. The P.O. Box. The P.O. Box. You can send us stuff. Okay. We have to make a note because we got yelled at this yeah. morning. If We didn't expect that many people to send Dark Knight Rises mm-hmm. and Swamp Zombies what is this to us. things? I got yelled at this morning and then I took a bullet for oh, you. Oh, so are we not a group? Nuke goes back and forth whether it's like we're all hack the movies or it's just me. Anyway. So we're hack the movies. Yeah. Anyway, we're anyway. He's just a hack. So we did, not expect, <laughs> we did not expect that many people to send us their copies. If you live outside of the U.S., please include return postage because it's very expensive to yes. mail back to you. I got yelled at this morning and I wa- I, it's great that people want to yeah. interact with us and I make fun of Tony for signing. He t- Tony signed more copies of The Dark Knight Rises than Christian Bale ever will. Yeah. And uh, like I said, we love it. And uh, we realistically, I only thought like two people would send it yeah. in. We got like five or six. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it from us. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.